What's up guys, it's Mari here with First Updates Now and I'm at the San Antonio District event. I am here with 6377 the Howdy Bots and their students, Dunnigan, Jack, and Kean. So without further ado, let's get into the video. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So one of the first things you may notice about the robot is the uh, rather strange battery mount here. So that choice was driven uh, by the turret. Actually, a lot of the choices on this robot were driven by the turret, but what we've ended up with here is a single billet um, that replaced the front drive rail that the battery slides into and then it's held in with the bumpers. And we had to do that because the ring, as it comes into the turret, takes up all the space that we would have had over here to put a battery. Um, so I think that leads us into the turret, which Jack will talk about. So one of the most striking uh, features of our robot is the 180 degree turret. And so this will give us uh, the ability to shoot while being defended and also allows us to change elevation. Uh, so as he was talking about before, the note snakes up in the back. Oh God. Okay. Not shooting it for, for obvious pit reasons. Um, but that feed, we can feed from any angle and any position. So, well, usually we move this up, but allows us to feed because, here, move the camera. Here. We have two rollers that vertically move the, the note up. So that feeds consistently into the same common position over here. So um, you may have noticed the amp mechanism on the back. So we have a second option from our ground intake. We've got a roller down in here that is independently moving and can switch directions. So if we choose to feed into the intake, it hands off up through this gap into this mechanism, and then we flip that back to score. Um, we, we chose this architecture because it allows us to get a really solid dunk into the amp, which is uh, really consistent. Um, and we've, uh, we're have we very consistent with that scoring. We're not missing notes because the note is already in the amp before we let it go. Um, lastly, on this robot, we have a climber that consists of two independent arms with big gearboxes. And those will lift to a climbing position, grab the chain and pull it down at the end of the match. You probably also noticed, if you're really into control systems, is that this turret is on a giant gear. We can't easily um, have a encoder on it. So what we in fact do is actually we have two, we have two encoders hooked up on it, one here and one over here that are on different gearings. And by calculating the difference between them um, and applying something called the Chinese remainder theorem, we are then able to calculate the turret rotation without needing to power up in a specific orientation. So we can start in any orientation and not have to worry about making sure that we turn on in a specific orientation. That is some super cool stuff that you guys have been working on. Now, I saw a little bit of y'all stuff from the Waco competition during week one, and things do look a little bit different. How about you tell us about that, Dunnigan? Yeah, so we, uh, we hit the shop hard in the spring break. Um, at the week one competition, we were feeding from the source into the shooter and we had a fixed angle. Um, the reason for that was our V1 um, angle change was uh, not working the way we wanted it to. So we had to do a full revision of the shooter to get that working. Um, so some of the things we changed were we went from a cam driven elevation system to a rack um, sector gear driven elevation system. And another thing that we changed was our shooter rollers were originally driven with a serpentine belt and we were drawing about 30 to 40 amps per side when we had that spun up. So we've since switched that to a gear and a belt and we've got a lot more efficiency there and we're drawing, we're not browning out anymore because we're drawing a reasonable amount of current. Um, the last change we made was to allow the turret to function. Um, because we changed where our elevation mechanism was, we had space in the front 
for this e-chain, which allows us to run the wiring for the turret in a very robust manner. Thank you guys so much for allowing us to interview you guys. Once again, this has been Team 6377, the Howdy Bots, at the First in Texas event, San Antonio. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.